what comes to mind as a kind of a motto to this brief uh, presentation is what Irish poet William Butler Yeats wrote so many years ago. The good lack all conviction, the bad are full of passionate intensity. That's not to say exactly that all moderates are good in that sense, or that radicals, I prefer the term radical to extremists, I think extremists is, uh, is too value-laden, uh, are as intense, but they are certainly more intense, both when they have recourse to violence and when they try to preserve a kind of a cons conservative norms of behavior. But when we speak about the variety of radical movements and the variety of, let's say, non-radical movements, call them moderates, and there is, of course, a variety. You can't generalize, not even within one country, but certainly not all over the uh, Muslim world. You forget, in the very presentation, perhaps, of this panel, a third force, a major player in all Muslim countries, and this is the state which usually considers itself to be as Muslim as the next guy. Has a lot of power, both, both hard, very hard, and soft, in all kind of modern brainwashing, intervenes, this is an interventionist state, not the old type of hands-off state, and above all, it's a state with a lot of experience of dealing with Muslims of two varieties. Now, the line taken by the state, both in declarations and above all in real action, is the major constraining factor in whatever moderates or the less radical among the radicals might do. I'm not absolving them of responsibility. They do have a lot of responsibility. Their lack of enthusiasm, their lack of courage many times, their double dealing, their opportunism are very well known and documented. I think about both varieties of social forces. But the state is a major player. And let us not forget it. The US has learned it at its own expense uh, when quite foolishly Condoleezza Rice leaned on the Egyptian government to hold elections uh, in November, December 05. And after the first two rounds in which the Muslim Brethren has won about one-fifth of the seat, President Mubarak has put his foot down and said, we are going to do the third round of the elections our way. The old way. Never bother about the details. And no Muslim brother was elected. Now, and he ran against <coughs> the ire of President Bush, of course, who backed his, his uh, Secretary of State, quite rightly, in, in terms of proper governmental behavior. Now, did he, did, did he do it out of cynicism? Did he pay the price of not being able to invite to the States? And you know, he, he has come in the States only under President Obama recently? No. He, he and his government is their clumsy, bumbling way, worried above all, of course, about their own survival, as all authoritarian regimes must be, did not trust the Muslim brothers. However much many people will vote for them, he did not trust it. And the question is, why blame you? It's not easy when you say to Egyptians, why not put them to the, top, to the test? Let them first run in municipal elections. Let's see how they run their, they say, well, you know, they did it in, in Algeria in the early 90s. And they ran their um, municipalities like small Iranian republics. What do, what do we do? What do we do? But how to get out of this predicament? 
Now, if there is in Egypt uh, a movement also called Wasatiya, with the same notion of the median ways, especially that we have we have heard about, which, as far as we can judge from their internal discussions, really broke with the Muslim brethren over full acceptance of pluralism, without ifs and buts. But even this government, even this movement, unlike uh, the Muslim brethren, which ha has been ready to take risks, has not been given license by the Egyptian government to operate either as a political party or even as a social movement. At most, they, can, they are recognized as a cultural movement. So there is no opening. Some way out of this had been shown by the most brutal movement, uh, government in dealing with the Islamists with Algeria, ironically enough. The Muslim of Sheikh, the uh, movement of Sheikh Nahanach has part of the Muslim brothers, which has not taken part in the violence, has been brought into government. And so far as we can judge now, 10 years after the civil war, is really edging towards some participation in the political process, detaching itself for those disabused radicals who will not choose violence anymore after that horrible civil war, but are not really ready to make pluralism, including pluralism in their own ranks. So here you are, preaching to them, both to the cynical, survival problem government, and to the weakened, yet still anti-democratic tendencies of the radical movements is not easy. And I do not believe that any kind of engagement or solutions in Washington think tanks, sorry about to say that, uh, will solve it. They will have to solve it themselves. There's no way out. We can't give them advice. We can only give them an example of how democracies properly operate, as corruption-free and as prosperous as they might be. 